friends, it's Barbara Sue at Kowalski Mountain and welcome back to our channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that button and help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Well, today, friends, I have a treat for you. Philip and I are in Kentucky at the homestead at Kowalski Mountain, and I wanted to cook something extra special for Easter, even though it was just the two of us. And I decided I would go ahead and cook up the prime rib that I had in my freezer. Now, I got to thinking about the different ways that I could cook my prime rib. Um, I could do it in the oven, but the RV oven is just not very reliable in maintaining a solid temperature. And I just didn't want to mess with that. The other option I have is I have a rotisserie oven and it cooks a very nice prime rib, but it is a power hog. And here at Kowalski Mountain, we are off grid. We are completely on generator. So I have to be really careful with the types of tools that I would use for that. So that option was out. That brought me to my Dutch oven cooking. Now, if you've watched our channel before, you know that I lack confidence in cooking in the Dutch oven. And my biggest weakness in doing so is in maintaining the proper temperature of the Dutch oven. Now, the nice thing about a prime rib is medium rare is a perfect cook. So I decided that if I was gonna cook something that was gonna end up on the rare side, a prime rib was a way to go. So right now I'm waiting for the coals to completely heat up. Philip got those lit up for me. And once they do, we're gonna preheat this Dutch oven and we're gonna get started. So for today's prime rib, I'm going to be following the instructions from a gentleman that I found on YouTube whose channel is The Backwoods Gourmet, and I will be sure to tag it here for you if you'd like to check out his channel. Now he um, teaches Dutch oven cooking using the uh, counting method of coals like I like to try to practice. Um, he does kind of a combination of his own technique and that skill, which really, really helps me out. Um, once we get the coals heated, we're gonna pour them out here on my cooking tray. My father-in-law, Dan Murphy, made me a cooking tray. So now I can cook up high. I don't have to be down on the ground anymore, which is really, really helpful. Um, but we're going to pour out those coals right here on this cooking tray and we are going to get this pot, this Dutch oven, preheated before we sear our prime rib roast. All right, so I'm kind of pushing these coals a little bit. I am eager to get started. I'm starting behind schedule as we were uh, running errands and I'm really afraid that we're going to be cooking this in the dark at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. So our coals are a charcoal -y gray. I'm going to use the Backwoods Gourmet, what he calls a one line method. So I'm just going to pour out my coals in a line. So we have a line of coals. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my coals, or my pot, directly over half of the coals because I want to get this good and hot to sear my meat. Now before this pan gets too hot, I'm gonna go ahead and put some olive oil in it. And while that does its thing, I'm gonna go get that roast and get ready to put it on. It did not take long to get this pot nice and hot directly on those coals. So let's go ahead and start searing this meat. Just so I don't drop it, I'm just gonna pick it up. 
Um, this roast has not, I have not put the herbs on the roast yet. The sear is looking beautiful on this roast. Now I don't really like how they cut it. The butcher cut the bones off, but he still tied them to the roast, which makes for really easy carving, but I don't really like it that way for cooking. The sear on this roast is looking gorgeous. All right, I'm happy with the sear. I'm gonna go ahead and take the roast out. And I'm going to let that cool just a little bit so I can put the herbs on it. And now I'm going to move this Dutch oven so that I can get it set up. So if you remember, the way that Dutch oven cooking works, depending on how we're cooking, we put heat on either the top or the bottom of the Dutch oven. And since we're gonna be roasting, we're gonna put a little bit of heat on the bottom. So I'm gonna pick out about seven coals and put here in a circle, uh-uh, hot. I don't wanna burn the dog that are gonna go underneath of the Dutch oven. You can definitely feel the heat. So this is small enough to be on the inside underneath of my Dutch oven. So it's back on there. And now we're going to add the coals to the top of the Dutch oven. Now I'm trying to pick out some larger coals. And these are just gonna be around the outside edge of my Dutch oven.
for cooking today is we're going to be cooking at 250 degrees. That's a low cook. This is a lot less coals than normally would cook with. This is gonna be heating up this pot nice and warm. And let's get this roast ready. I'm gonna put this up here so I do not forget to use it. Now in the kitchen, I went ahead and I mixed up all of the herbs. I have a combination of fresh herbs and dried herbs. The onions that I'm using today um, that you can see here in the mix are right here from Kowalski Mountain. They are wild onions that I just picked right off the field. Now they have this space in here. I'm gonna take advantage of that and I'm gonna put some herbs in there. And I also picked some fresh herbs from my mother-in-law's rosemary plant. My rosemary did not make it. And so I kind of snagged this from hers because hers is gorgeous. I'm not happy with that one. And I'm tucking the rosemary right underneath the strings from the butcher's twine. All right, now I wanna make sure I use up all of the herb blend. The Homestead Gourmet, he recommended searing your meat first, which honestly I've probably always done the opposite way because if you put your herbs on first, you burn them rather than uh, just sear the meat. So I did follow those instructions and I'm, that makes perfect sense to do it that way. Um, I have to say, I've probably always done it the opposite way. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this roast in this Dutch oven. I'm gonna use my pot lifter to remove my lid. And I'm going to use a cooking rack today to ensure that my roast does not burn. Next, I'm gonna add my roast. You can already hear it sizzling in there. Now today I have also upped my game and we are using a thermometer. So we will be monitoring the internal temperature of the roast. Now we wanna get that probe deep into the meat but we don't want it touching any of the bones. We'll get this lid back on and get this cooking. Now, because the roast is so close to the top, we wanna to be sure to keep those coals to the outside of the rim so we don't burn the top of that roast. Now these extra coals. I'm probably going to start some more, um, but I'm going to keep these together, keep them hot. Um, I've got a really good temperature start right now, and we're going to let that do its thing. When I watched the video that the Backwoods Gourmet did, he did not talk about turning the lid at all. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that because I know that that's common Dutch oven practice. 
Um, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this lid a quarter turn. Now I should also be turning the bottom, but because my meat is on a rack, I'm not worried about a hot spot there. So I'm not gonna even worry with that. So we're just gonna turn the top. So I'm gonna just carefully give it a spin. My handle helps me tell how much I've turned it. So I turned it a quarter. And in 15 more minutes, we'll give it another quarter turn. Now the meat is definitely cooking because my uh, temperature in my probe is going up. We're up to 97 degrees. We're looking at 130 to 135 for a medium rare roast. Now we're also having some wind issues. So my coals look like they're really cooking down quickly. I'm just gonna add a little. I'm not gonna add much. And probably in the next half hour, I'm gonna go ahead and need to get some more coal started. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some more charcoal uh, lit up so that it's ready when I need it. So I've got my chimney starter and I've got some paper in the bottom just so all the coals won't fall through. So I'm not gonna start a ton because this is just the refresher charcoal. And then this is going to go underneath. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move this up there onto the table so it's nice and close to my workstation. Now I just put that on top of the coals that I already got started and it's already doing its job. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing and heat up some additional coals so when I'm ready, I have plenty to use. We've been at about an hour so far. I didn't set the timer on my last uh, turn, and so I'm a little bit over, I think, on that time, but we're right around an hour of our start here. These coals are really getting worn down, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some more after I turn this. So let's go ahead and do our quarter turn. My seal looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull out a few of, whew, I'm gonna get a glove for that. A few of these coals are not completely ready, but I'm just gonna kind of stick them in there. Give this heat just a little boost. And I'm also gonna put some more underneath. And that's where my temperature is really lacking. I can see there's almost no coals under there.
I'll probably add some more coals shortly. Um, our cook temperature is at about 106 degrees. Remember our goal is 130 to 135 for a medium rare roast. So far so good. I'm afraid it's gonna get dark, but we will see how far we get. Well, friends, we are at 120 degrees and we are about an hour and a half in. Um, I'm adding a few coals that are not yet started into my mix just to give a little boost. The adjoining coals should go ahead and start these up for me. I can smell the roast faintly, not as well as I did when I smelt the chicken, which has me worried. I have not peaked because I don't want to let the heat out. I'm going to go ahead and do my quarter turn. And we have 15 degrees to go. So almost there and it's not dark yet. Let's see what sunset is at. It's 620 now and I think sunset is shortly after 7 so I think we're okay on time. Oh gosh and rain at 745. I know it'll be dark then. Sunset is at 7.25, so I think we're definitely going to finish within the hour. That's an hour away, so I think we're going to finish in time before it gets dark. Um, this just jumped up to 122 degrees, so that's good. We're making progress. I want to peek in this pot so bad I can hardly stand it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to let the heat out. I'm going to let it do what it's supposed to do and trust my thermometer. Our temperature is flickering between 129 and 131. There we go, see, 131. Okay, friends, our temperature right now is flickering between 129 and 131, up and down, up and down. Our target temperature is 130 to 135 for a medium rare. Now, Philip likes his meat a little bit more cooked. I like a perfect medium rare. Um, but also because this is a almost six pound roast, this is a lot of meat for us to eat in one meal. So I definitely want to cook it a little bit more on the rare side so that it can be reheated and not be overcooked. Since I'm at my target temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek quickly to see how we're doing. Let me get my fork. So let's go ahead and peek and see how we're doing. Mm. Mm. It looks beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and put that lid back on. Well, let me give you a quick look. This is at the 129, 131 flickering. I'm really happy with the way that looks. It feels nice and firm. I'm gonna cover it back up. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this and let this continue. I really wanna hit that 135 target temperature. I hated to leave the lid open that long, but I couldn't stand it anymore. I needed to peek at it and see how it's really doing. Um, I'm happy with that. I've got some good temperature around here still. So we're gonna let this be. I'm gonna go ahead and start the potatoes and the things that are gonna go with it. Um, once the roast hits 135, it is going to rest for 30 minutes before I cook it. That lets all the juices settle right back in and makes it really delicious and also gives me time to finish up the last bit of the meal prep. Super excited about this. I liked the feel of the meat when I'm cooking. I, I touch it with my fork and I can kind of feel the deadness a little bit. I was happy with that. So we're going to let this thing do its thing. I'm going to go start those sides. So I checked on my meat and the temperature went down 
two degrees, not going up. So I'm, I heated up some more coals. I'm going to add those to it. Hopefully that's going to get the job done. That seems to have done the trick. I can feel the heat up here again. My temperature's climbing again. We only have six degrees to go and we're going to hit that target temperature of 135 degrees. Almost there. <clears throat> well friends, the prime rib has reached its peak temperature of 135 degrees and it's time to pull it off the heat. Now this roast is going to go into the house and it's going to rest. That's going to give me time to finish up all the side dishes and then we are going to enjoy our delicious prime rib cooked in the Dutch oven. It looks perfect. The roast looks perfect. Here it comes, friends. Tent that up and get it into the house. Meter ain't getting burnt. Right? No, no, it's better. I could have dumped those in the fire, not there, but. Put it in the fire. I just let it sit right there. Okay, if you're happy with that. All right, friends, it's the moment of truth. Let's cut the roast and see how it looks. I'm going to cut the strings. Take off that rosemary. All right, here we go. Honey, you want to come take a close-up video? And there it is. Looks beautiful. Thank you. All right, now time to eat it. Thanks for watching. I'm pretty happy with this experience. Um, <clears throat> one thing, um, 
I think I videoed it. I got a little panicky because I was losing temperature and I put a few more coals on it, which I probably used more coals than I really needed, but that brought my temperature right up, got my roast cooking again and finished it out. So I think it was the right thing to do. Um, I guess I should have been a little bit more forthright a little bit earlier and put them on a little bit earlier, but I'm still pretty happy with how this experience went. I hope that you will venture out and try some Dutch oven cooking as well. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep trying. That's what I'm doing. Um, I have cooked chicken before that was not done. Um, but so far, my experiences have been positive because I keep following the directions and I keep pressing on. As I get better, I'll get a little bit more free with my technique, but for now, I like to stick to the rules. Thank you so much, friends, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. That makes a really big difference and helps us grow. Also, share our video with your friends. That really helps our channel to grow. Thank you so much for watching.